Fucking oh, hell, I've only been here an hour. I'm addicted to Diet Cokes. <laughs> it's like your second one. <laughs> yeah, I'll be thinking about it all the way home. Wake up in the morning like that. <laughs> I need this Cokes there or Cokes there. <laughs> right, we're on episode 21. 22. We haven't done this for ages. Oh, 22. <laughs> oh, we actually, we, we was on 21. Tw- yeah, yeah, we was on 21, yeah. Action. Yeah, my knuckles are killing. <laughs> yeah, we're back. <laughs> Let's pretend that we didn't just film the other one. I've got a jacket on now, it's all right. Yeah, he's got. Ch- <laughs> Whoa. I've got. I've got a combination of merch on now. I don't know. What I'm You're very do colourful it. today. I know this is. Well, this is actually still within what I'm allowed to wear, oh, according okay. to Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> we're banned. We're just on brand colours. I'm like, I thought, well, that's similar. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I've got the purple one under here. Look, I've got yeah. the new one. So we've got the new ones and the old one. Yeah. Because we've just started with a new merch, thanks to your recommendation mm-hmm. from Thick. Right. We've got on with that. I'm going to get loads of different ones done. Yeah. Um, you've seen the designs for the other ones, mm-hmm. haven't you? have got a Pac-Man one. Um, what else have we got? We've got a few different ones that just look pretty fucking smart. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Make it a reality. I like that. That and was good. We were just talking about that. Yeah. I do like that, actually. I'm not used... I'm not... I like a bit of cheese. I like a little bit of cheese, mm-hmm. but not too much cheese. Shan put it to me. It was like, we need to hear a little slogan, make it a reality. Yeah. And I was like... Straight away, I was like, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, so it's So good. it's stuck. It's on the bottom of my post now. Join, yeah. inquire today, make it a reality. Yeah, I like it. In that voice, especially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I, that's when I'm ready. Like, oh, I read it in that voice every time I read it back. Hashtag figure. Hashtag bikini. Hashtag inbox me. <laughs> Is that what you put on? No, I think two or three two out of three might be right. DM me hun. <laughs> Please put that on the back. Please never say hun again, Dan. Yes, boss, yes, boss, yes, boss. <laughs> Oh, God. So we're going to do today. People like these. I thought it might be a bit not great, but I actually get a lot of comments saying, love the questions ones. Yeah. Because it must be so informative. I know, we're just so informative. So informative. We've just got so information. I can't keep it all to myself. I make it all up on the spot anyway. None of it's real. <laughs> we actually just send questions to each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sent all these questions into myself. <laughs> you probably can do that, actually. You can. Can you? Not that I've done that. <laughs> As a father, I'm, I'm going to try that, yeah. How Maybe did you I'm... get so tall and handsome? Well, well now that you ask. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> just rock up next time and Dan's like got a 25 yeah. compl- compliments. Yeah, just close to the compliments. The whole questions are just yeah, Dan's yeah, yeah. compliments. The, your eyebrows natural. Yeah, <laughs> fucking right there. You seen them? I got a really good compliment the other day, right? I went to the dentist and he said, have you had a work done on your top teeth? I was like, no, that's just my natural teeth. Oh, did I say that to the other day? I seen someone in gym. I was like, your teeth look class, mate. When did you go? He was looking at me blank. I was like, no, these are my teeth. I was like, fuck (laughs) off. These are my real teeth. They didn't look like real teeth, mate. They look like real good teeth. (laughs) They shit started showing me pictures from like 10 years ago where he still got the same teeth. I was like, shit, mate, Harry's teeth. (laughs) How did you get all that porcelain looking teeth in there? Looks so good. Uh, So... (laughs) Right, we've done that question. We're going to get stuck in. Are you ready for question one? Hit me. Okay. I want, to, <laughs> I want to compete for the first time next year, struggling to decide between doing a prep and the sport I already play competitively. Does it have to be one or the other? Can you still do other sports and bodybuild simultaneously? Depends what sport is, isn't it? I think it depends, like... It depends, like, how often you're doing it because like, I wouldn't want to be on prep doing another sport like five times a week. I feel like I'd yeah, die. Like fucking netball competitions and yeah. fucking running about and chasing the ball and you're like going. You might be all right for the first half of prep, but I feel like once you I get to sort the, of. Yeah, it's probably the last eight weeks. You yeah. probably need to back off a little bit, wouldn't you? I think if you're just playing football or rugby or netball or mm. anything that required energy, which is most sports, <laughs> chess, you'd be all right. <laughs> just won't be able to concentrate. <laughs> which one was I again? Black or white? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That was like two weeks uh, out. A prawns or what? Oh, a prawn sounds nice. Oh, prawn sandwich. That would literally be where your mind would yeah, go. Yeah, you would be it? like, oh, I can get some sauce on them prawns. <laughs> All <laughs> you hear in every conversation is like food. <laughs> yeah. Stop talking about food. Oh. So yeah, I think um, yeah, the answer is maybe. Maybe, but not in the last, not Probably, in the last yeah. leg. I wouldn't like to do that. If you've never done a prep and you've never been down to that last, yeah, it's fucking, yeah, yeah. I won't advise it. No. Probably not a good idea. Have you ever had? What was that? Have you ever had a client do that? Like, do that's what I was literally just racking my brains. Then when you were saying it, trying to think, 
Um, I did have a girl that was doing kickboxing. She was quite good kickboxing and stuff like that. That's quite cool. But then she's wrapped it in now and just focused on bodybuilding because it was too... Yeah. The thing is, like, if you're doing a sport, seriously, you give your all to it, isn't it? Yeah. You can't give your all to everything, Yeah. unfortunately. So, yes, you could do bodybuilding whilst doing netball, let's call it. But you probably wouldn't do great at both. Yeah. So it's just where where you want to put your time, really. I'll just pull a little bit of time back from something else. You probably I mean, have like seventy percent of both, rather than like. Yeah, yeah, you'd be seventy percent of both, and at some points, yeah, that's probably quite accurate, isn't it? About seventy percent of both. Because if you diet it down, you're not and you're playing a sport like you, your energy levels are going to be awful. Your energy levels are shit, just, and then your sport's saving. not going to be very good. Yeah, and then it's going to have a knock on even with, even in off season. Really, it's going to have a knock on with your recovery. weight training and recovery and everything yeah. like that. Like if you smash the ass out of a leg session, bodybuilding style, and then you had to go and do sprinting the next day or whatever, with like yeah. It's not going to be amazing. I've got some clients that do like um, a bit of running and then a bit of like weight training and then mm. a bit of like whatever sport. I've got some clients that do like football and stuff. And even with, I was having a, client, a conversation with a client the other day actually and it's like trying to navigate the weight training around a football match and football training. And she's dieting, but she's not like, yeah, yeah. But she's not competing. Yeah, yeah. So um, and even that's like tough because we're having mm. to like knock around with the volume, like try this session on this day, change this session around yeah. a bit. And even that twice a week is a bit of a, not a nightmare, but it's like you have to, we've had yeah, to like navigate around as, it. Yeah, yeah, can't get as yeah. much out of it. So, no, if so, you yeah, want to do it right Maybe well. pack it for a year, <clears throat> maybe. This is a big question. A big one, a long one. I'll stay focused throughout. Okay, actually, it's like two questions. Are you oh. ready? Yeah. Opinion on Primo and VAR for females, trained for 80 years, never competed, scared of side effects, so never touched them, do you use Clen? At a point where I'm considering competing and trying to cycle, and then a tag on for that, I struggle. I struggle with binge eating though, so this is a huge issue that I'm working on and have been for years. Thank you, Ray. That is a big one. Should we start with the opinion on Primo and Var? No, let's start oh, with okay. the end bit because the that needs sorting out first. Yeah, because you can't you, you can't consider. compete you can't compete while you binge eating. Which she knows because she said that. But just to put that in front of the other one, because it's probably more important. And that, to be honest, that's not for me to sort out, or not to you, for you to sort out, really. It's like, because you don't know her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's obviously something she's working on. So if you're still binge eating, and this is, I'm not saying this to the person who asked the question, actually, I'm just saying it to everybody who might be watching who might have a problem with true binge eating, that it is sortable. Um, 100%. I've got loads of clients that have had problems with that in the past, but. Um, you need to have that locked in before you get back into bodybuilding, eh? Because it'll because it will trigger it off. Yeah. Once you get prepping and then come out coming out shows and all the rest of it, it will trigger that off again. So you need to have that on lockdown before you come into that, and then obviously even consider steroids. Like, yeah. Because that you need the you need your base lane first. Yeah, because it doesn't mean you can't <clears throat> you can't um, ever compete if you've struggled with binge eating. Because I used to struggle with that, and I'm absolutely yeah, fine. That's now. what that's what and I'm saying. Like loads loads clients, of people, yeah, loads and loads and loads and loads. If anything. Getting into the lifestyle can help sort it out, but then yeah. when you get into the competing, yeah. that's when it can trigger it back off. Yeah, after, if you've not put the, the sh- work in to sort it out. Yeah, after the show and stuff like that. So as long as you know you're certain, and then obviously you can make a commitment if you want to use some steroids and things like that, that's fine, that's your choice. The steroid question, who? I, th- I know what your opinion is. Leah knows my opinion is. on this one, and it's not an opinion, it's a fact. And I'm basing my opinion on the facts of everybody, what I've seen it do it too. Yeah, and I also have seen, now I've become more aware of it, girls that have taken it. So you're seeing and this as well so now, I've yeah? So I've seen the, the side effects of what can happen with Yeah, it so now. it's coming around. So, and nobody's really talking about this. It becomes, so, Anavar was used by women for decades because it was, you never got any side effects from it, particularly unless you abused it. And we'll get into the lengths and duration and dosages of... What my experience? So I'm not. So what I'm gonna. What I'm not gonna do is because this is the problem. I'm not gonna talk about the science of it. I'm not gonna talk about this and that and what study showed this and fucking that and all the rest of it. Because that's how everyone's got into this mess to yeah. start with, yeah. in my opinion. Right. This is what was happening for many years. Women were just taking a little bit of Anavar, not really seeing any problems. Blah blah blah. Everything was good. Right. Then the science crew come along two or three years ago, maybe four years ago now. Anavar's really bad. Primo's the best one. And we'll talk, they've asked about Primo, Primo specifically. They've mentioned it on a few other steroids as well, which I disagree with also. Primo is milder. 
It's, you're going to get less side effects. This is the one you want to be using. If you're using Anavar, you're stupid. This is what everybody was saying, right? And at the full time, the full time. I mean, you've known me for years. I've said it. I've said it the full way through. Wrong, 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 yeah. wrong. Not going to. It's not. It's, that's not correct. It's not correct. It's not correct. So everyone switched over to Primo. I even had some clients leave me because I didn't want them to take. I advised them not to take Primo, yeah. and that Anavar was a better option. Yeah. This happened to me a couple of years <laughs> ago because they must have thought I was an idiot or something for saying that. A couple of years down the line, where are we at? People, girls have all been taking Primo. And yeah. tiny dosages, like they've been recommended as well. Yeah. And actually in less dosages than the Anavar that was demonized. And it's not happened to every single female, but it's happened to a fucking yeah. lot. The voice all started getting, you know that voice, yeah. you know that we all know the voice. You've been in the body, the girls have got that type voice that starts to happen when it changes. And it's all from Primo. So now I get all these consultations and obviously I'm deep in the mix of these fucking conversations with people that have had the problems because they're coming to me. Yeah, I was told to use a bit of Primo and my, and my voice has started going mm. all like this. I've, do you know what, Leah? I've never heard that once from somebody who's took Anavar. Yeah. And I was sat within the framework of what we would recommend for Anavar, which would be no more than 10 milligrams for six to eight weeks maybe yeah and twice a year maximum right yeah. that's that's the guidelines that i always stick to with my own clients that's not what i tell them to take that's the maximum that i yeah. allow them to take yeah. per year and then if you did that for 12 15 years straight you might start accumulating some problems maybe because it's a long thingy devil's in the duration with drugs the longer you stay on it the more yeah. likely you're going to run into problems which <laughs> is why i try and dance around the competition the best i can do which i'll get in, i'll get into it all anyway fuck it i'll get into it in a minute i'll tell you exactly what i do and what i don't do the Prima Ball on, I'm just, con I don't need to look at any science, to be honest. I'm just talking to people left, right, and center that I've done a little bit of Prima Ball on. They get to week, even after week one sometimes, week two, they're starting to notice that things are changing. They're not even making it past week four and the voices have already changed. And it's changed forever at that point. And it infuriates yeah. me because <clears throat> they're being told to do this in a lot of instances by people that have got fucking no experience whatsoever. They've listened to it on a podcast, like you are doing right now. They've listened <laughs> to it on a podcast, or they've listened to it on some education thing or whatever, and this is that, and this is that. Then they're telling people to do it like it's gospel. Yeah. And they've got no actual fucking experience of that. And even when they are seeing it, sometimes they don't give a fuck. They're still just carrying on with it like nothing's happening. So for me personally, I don't want to ruin anyone's voices. And we've had this conversation, haven't we? Like we've spoken about it previously. And I would never, I would never tell you to do that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Um, kind of get in the way of that. And that's just the way I am. And like all through it, I've stuck to my guns because I, because I knew what, because I've, because people have to, I know people have tried Primo years ago and I know what's happened. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and now it's all happening again. So now there's a lot of this Primo voice going about and, and now everyone's starting to go back to Anabar yeah. a little bit because yeah. it worked all along and there was nothing yeah. wrong with it. And yeah, this, right. The, the gains from Primo, now I've seen that firsthand. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I've had clients that have come to me that have been using it, or I've told them, I won't advise it, you might get this and that problem, and they've been like, I'm not bothered. Yeah. Okay, if that's if that's your progressive and you want to, you prefer a little bit of Primo, they, it's very rare, very, very rare, it's that, that do that with clients, because there's not many of them that have said that, but the fucking results from it are pretty rapid. Yeah. I will say yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> They're very rapid, which kind of tells you everything in itself, yeah. to be fair. That is obviously stronger because the results yeah. are so much yeah, more rapid, true. which is kind of obvious. Um, <clears throat> but that that's where I sit on that. I just I stuck to my guns throughout all of that, um, much to my demonization at some points by some people. Um, and, it, and it turned out to be correct. And the, the other coaches, and I won't actually name them, but I've had conversations with them that have been sat at the top for a while and they've been doing it a long time. And they've worked with, same as me, hundreds, if not, more multiple hundreds and hundreds of girls with it and they're, they're saying the same thing yeah yeah because they fucking know do you yeah. know what i mean um they've got a lot of experience yeah because they've because they've experienced it all they've been through it and they was there in the beginning when it all started coming about um and now everyone's tucking the tail between the legs and, and adding from what they've told people to do and all the rest of it um and yeah so and i got irate about this the other day <clears throat> I get irate about it every time I talk about it, actually. And every time my mate goes to me, you should just put this out on Instagram, just go into details. And I'm like, my problem with going on Instagram with it all and giving specific details is that somewhere there's a 15 year old girl sat watching my Instagram. Oh, all them girls on this, they're attacking Anavar. Right. Yeah. So that's what I need to do. And this yeah. is my problem with going on. I mean, fair enough, they can watch it on the YouTube, but it's less likely than it would yeah. be on, in on my Instagram. Because <laughs> obviously on my Instagram, it's just a catalog of fucking awesome looking women 
that they're going to tie it to. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So that's my thing with that. And that's that's just where I sit on it. Do you know what I mean? Um, personally, I don't want to see any clients doing that. Do you know, I don't want to see anybody ruin themselves. I don't want to see... And if, and at least if they do do that and they've made their own choice to do that, they've, I've warned them. And again, I'm not saying it happens to every single female because there's plenty that it hasn't happened to. Do you know what I mean? Um, and they've got away with it quite luckily. But yeah, there's people doing that and they're ramming fucking stuff. Left, and then they start putting Anavar on top of it. Like, yeah. And, and like, if that's what you want to do, that's sound. But what pisses me off is when they're being told that that's the best option. And, and they're going to trust the coach. That's and they're going to, of course, they're going to trust the coach. That's what they're paying the coach yeah. for. And that's why it pisses me off because I'm talking to 22 year old fucking Sally that's upset and I'm on a consult call with them and the vo- they know now the voice is different for the rest yeah. of their life because some fucking numbnuts has yeah. told them to do that. Um, and now they're never going to get the voice back to normal and it infuriates me. So we need to get rid of that happening. And, and get it back to where it was because that, that wasn't really happening before now Anavar can be bad don't get me wrong if you're taking 20, 30, 40 milligram for 16 weeks straight <laughs> well yeah you're yeah. going to get some fucking problems do you know what yeah. I mean um, but if you stick within the little bits of time frame and you, and you know how we do it 5, maybe 10 milligrams no longer than 8 weeks and this is the problem I get with a lot of the girls dancing around the shows because Say their finals is right over there yeah. and the qualifiers here. I'm not going to put them on full whack from eight weeks yeah, out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. From the thing, because then they've got a stretch and then a stretch and then a stretch. Yeah, it's like, like timing it, right? And the devil's in the duration, like I say. So I'll often start really like at five milligrams, yeah. like maybe six weeks out from the show. And then they'll do that. So we're not really running any problems. But we're still getting a bit of the benefit get it up to 10 as we get a bit nearer to the... Co- and, like, some of the girls have been panicking. Some of the girls this year, actually, on prep, and like, I feel dead skinny because they're, like, four weeks out mm. or five weeks out or whatever, and the, quali- and the finals is fucking miles away. And then all of a sudden, pop, 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 yeah. pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything starts coming to life and they're buzzing again. Yeah. Um, but I'm not willing to wreck them for a competition, yeah. and that's what I tell them. Yeah. So, and some people just wham on, wham them on loads real far. I've, yeah. I've had some come to me, and they'll put them on gear at 20 weeks out from a show. <laughs> and I'm like... And they'll, and they'll come to me halfway through the prep because the prep might be fucked or something and they might yeah. be like 10 weeks out. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know what you want me to do now. Like, you shouldn't really be on that. So you can have a complete, and I'll just tell them the full drill. Yeah. And if they want to continue with the prep and all the rest yeah. of it, they can. But yeah, God, it's actually loads scary of, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's fucking terrifying. But especially if coming from somebody who's not got, I think you need a lot of experience with women over a lot of years to be able to kind of get danced around that properly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've I've never changed. I've ne- how many people have I coached? I've <laughs> never changed a woman's voice. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. On purpose. You can tell I'm I'm getting mad about yeah. this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can am tell sorry. You feel very strong. I'm here sorry this got intense. I've I've bottled it. No, up I think for, it's a good point though. And yeah, you know I've bottled it up for a while because so. going out on the internet and rambling about it, I don't think it's a good thing. And in private, when I've spoken about this a lot, it infuriates me. Um. But yeah, that's that's it laid out. That's that's my difference between them two. And there'll probably there'll be a backlash by this by all the fucking people that think Primo's fucking thing and all this and that because that's what they've been told in a study and this and that. And um, I was speaking to a science guy about all this and that. And the studies are not. I mean, what are the studies based on as well? D- was they based on people? Yeah, on you don't con- know. Was they based on people on content? Was they yeah. like? And it's steroids, just a what- small group of people that yeah. they're testing on as well. And, yeah, and it's like a lot of it was, I think, done on animals as well. I think originally, yeah. like years ago and stuff like that. Yeah. Just, just loads of like mad stuff to it, and like then there's the difference between injectable and tablet yeah. it's like a tablet's got half life that's going to run out, pre- which is what I think a lot of it comes down to. None of our tablets in your system for across a day and then it kind of drops off or whatever and then it goes back in the next day whereas like if you put an injection in that's a long ester and then it's in your system and then you do the next one then it accumulates a little bit more do you know what yeah, I mean I so it. instead it's of like being like a, a, yeah it kind of like builds up a little bit more which is what where I think it all falls down because I think because it's building in your system and it's just staying in your system whereas at least if you're just doing the end of our tablet it's kind of dropping back off and not accumulating yeah, so much over time that's where I think it all fell down because yeah. on paper the, the Prima Bowling should be weaker but as as anything, if it accumulates more inside you and your blood for twenty four hours a day, yeah, yeah, weeks and weeks yeah. and weeks and weeks, that's where the problem starts to come from. That's what I think anyway. But it doesn't matter what the fucking science says. Really, this is what's happening in real life. 
So you could tell me that the sky is green on a scientific graph, but when I look at it, everybody yeah. says it's blue. It's fucking blue. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a fucking duck. <laughs> <laughs> In it. What about you? Because obviously you talk to a lot of girls and you've just said, which is new to me, I didn't know you'd spoke to all of this, but obviously we're not going to start name dropping people and, and things like that. But is that your experience as well when you're talking to people now, yeah? Yeah, because obviously I've got quite a few friends now within like bodybuilding mm -hmm. from like being in bodybuilding for a while. And um, yeah, obviously we talk about stuff like that and, you know, have conversations about it. And even some of them have said to me, oh yeah, like I've, like I did notice that a bit and they've had to like actually monitor their voice like on they've been doing recordings like a dictaphone yeah 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 to actually check well. the voice every yeah. day and I'm like oh my god that's that actually terrifies me like yeah. the idea of that ever because yeah. like what at some point most girls right that do bodybuilding you're going to do bodybuilding for a bit but you're not going to go to the Olymp nine out of ten people aren't going to go to the Olympia right yeah. get into bodybuilding like yes some people do but I just think realistically if you're doing it as a hobby you can still get to like a pretty decent level yeah without it having Hammering. a negative effect. Yeah, this, well, this is what I put on my story the other week. Fucking hell, that got a lot of reaction to it, that thing. But, like, for the categories that we're talking about specifically, which is bikini, train bikini, tone figure, yeah. athletic figure, I'll draw the line there because train figure could be a completely set, um, different kettle of fish. Yeah. Now, I've had a few – I don't do loads of train figure, but I have a good few, and they've done it within just a little bit of anavar, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That probably starts coming down a bit more genetically at that point because I think the drugs do need to probably escalate to get them where they need to be most of the time. So I won't even include that in the conversation. But to be very good at them few sub sectors of fucking bodybuilding that I've just spoke about, I'm telling you now because I've coached them all and I've won with them all and I've got all the top honours with all of them. They didn't, they didn't do that. Yeah. They didn't need to do that. Yeah. They've got the right amount of muscle that they needed. They've got the right hardness, conditioning, all that with a little bit of Anavar, a little bit of Clen. Maybe some T3, mm. some of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's all you need. And also, you've had like so many girls even win overalls and shows that are na natural. So it's yeah, like... that's what I mean. You don't. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And I think if you feel like, and this this will upset some people, but if you f if you do need to hammer had more hardcore drugs to get to that, I probably won't continue bodybuilding. Yeah. Unless you do want to make yeah. some changes to yourself. Yeah. Because it. You're probably not even going to get there then because if you haven't got yeah. it, you haven't got it, which we've yeah. said before, which is awful, but it's the fact. If you can't run fast, you can't run fast. If you can't jump high, you can't jump high. If you, can't, yeah. if you haven't got genetics to grow muscle and have a nice shape, then you haven't got it anyhow. So, yeah. Do yeah, you know what, what I mean? mean? Or maybe like if someone's a bit newer, maybe you just actually need to spend, spend some, some more time. time in an yeah. off season building some muscle because you'll look a lot harder and a lot better when you diet down yeah. if you've actually got. Um, the muscle mass rather than just jumping in after like a year of training and like exactly. trying to look like you've been doing it for a long <laughs> yeah, time it, take, it takes time to build muscle and that's that is a good point like a lot of these girls that I've got that are doing really well they were training like fuck for five six yeah. years before they even found what bodybuilding was do you know yeah. what I mean yeah um, and I'm not saying that's all of them I've, I've definitely had some girls who've got fantastic genetics oh, but nine times out of ten yeah the groundwork's been there yeah. and then they go and bodybuild after that so I mean, if you really want to, if you have got the right genetics and you just want to shave your time down, that's up, that's up to you at what cost yeah. that you want to do that. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, the Primo Anavar thing, like that's my honest opinion on it. I think that was, I think that was a good chat. Yeah. And helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot I, of people won't know that. I am out of the Primo closet. Yeah. yeah. Everyone knows that. Yeah. So yeah, that was that question. And yeah, with the binge eating side of things, I think. I always think with binge eating, if someone comes to me and they're like, I'm really struggling with binge eating, like my first thing is like, have you had professional help with it? Mm. In terms of like, have they been to get, because some people will need like m more professional help, more than yeah, what a coach than, can give them. Than just sorting out what your coach can do, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes it's worth like doing that first and then, because there's a difference right between struggling with overeating and a little bit of like overeating than binge eating disorder. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. Know? Sometimes it's just sorting your diet out to be more balanced and yeah. fucking nutritious. I'll yeah. get rid of that. Because some people, if they're just trying to not eat to be skinny yeah, and then they're that fucking starving, they end up binging yeah, exactly. every night or every weekend or every few days or whatever it might be, you, 
maybe they're just hungry yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I'll have this I mean? conversation with clients all the time and it's like some of them, they're terrified of putting the calories up and they're on low, like I'll get women come to me and they're on low calories, yeah. like 11, 12, 1300 and they're not losing weight and they won't put the food up and I'm like, you need to put your calories up, like you yeah. need to be getting them up maybe, like let's just start with 16, 1700 calories and they're terrified and it's like explaining, well, yeah, but if you're eating 1200 but then you're smashing this on a Friday night and you're having yeah, a bit of this yeah. here, it's like, actually you, your average calories are going to be a lot higher yeah. than if you can actually actually stick to 16, 1700. That's true. No, they've just been chronically under eating for years. Yeah. And in that cycle of, then they get yeah. fed up of it, go mad, go yeah. back to it because they can't eat anymore because they put weight on. Yeah. And, and then people think their metabolism is damaged, whereas yeah. actually it's not. It's just... It's un very unlikely. Yeah. See, that was a good question. Whoa. Well, I've got another one. I've been I got that off my chest, Lee. I feel. Do you like feel that. better now? Oh, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, problem, but you might have just helped someone the a lot. The problem there. will continue, but I might have just saved a few voices in that rant, which yeah. is very positive. Welcome, voices. <laughs> um, okay, this is uh, another binging one. Binging in prep, post show food, controlling intake. How to not be a pig? For sure. <laughs> I feel like this is a thing that everyone struggles with a little bit. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I know this is actually because she actually sent it to my inbox um, instead. I just said stick it in the in Oh, the okay. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I knew who it was, yeah. Um, for me, and I've, I have spoke about this before, about what we do post-show, and it's and especially if you're prone to this, is just ram the food through the fucking yeah. roof, right? Because... Like, we, I mean, we've just been talking about this before. We'll come on out with the book. Like, with junk food and processed food and things like that, you'll never get your fill of it, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, you can eat so much and you can just keep eating after you've And that's all year round because it's obviously it's triggering off all the happy chemicals in your brain that are going mental. <laughs> give me more, give me more. So I do. I put people's food up quite quickly after the show anyway just to tackle the hunger and all the rest of it the best I possibly can. With these people, I would even more so... Yeah. Get it really high. Because you can always pull it back, right? You might. Yeah. I think we did this last time. Like my food was up. I, yeah. And then we'll get. And then we just pull it back. Then, once, it, then when, once your body calms down and everything calms down and you're like, all right, I feel all right now. Okay. Pull the calories <laughs> feel back. Feel mentally stable now. You know what I mean? Because for me, it's like, it's the best of both, best of both ways because, or what is it? The best of two evils or whatever it is. Like if you try and bring someone up slowly after a show, to me, unless it's somebody specific, which I do have clients like this. Um, that will just happily just, yeah. no, I don't want, that's too fast. And they'll actually stick to yeah. the plan 100%, yeah. which is mad. But these girls like it. If you're prone to binging, fucking ram everything up that fills you, mega yeah. eye, and make it oats, potatoes, bagels, and put yeah. fucking things that are nice on it, like peanut butter, dark chocolate, and just ram yourself to the yeah. gills with that. I'll, I, can, I can go really high with some people that have had these similar problems, clients that I've had. And they're that stuffed, it's difficult yeah. to then be eating more food on yeah. top of it. So if you've just rammed your food up to, let's just pick a big number, 4,000 out the gate from competing. It's fairly extreme, but <laughs> for, let's say 4,000. <laughs> yeah, because that's, yeah. right? Ram it up to 4,000 through all like dense foods and like nutrient yeah. dense, not calorie dense, like stuff that's going to like, like good not food. digest quickly. It's good food. It'll keep you full for a long time. You feel stuffed after you've eaten it. The chance of you then going smashing in three Dominoes and two Ben and Jerry's yeah. every night when you start getting bored are a hell of a lot more unlikely yeah. than if you was trying to control it on the way up, right? Yeah. So then when you come to the four-week mark after you've been eating 4,000 calories um, pretty much every day of all this mad food, not mad food, of all this food that keeps you full and all the rest of it, is your weight gain going to have been better or worse than if you tried to control it and you ended up smashing in pizzas every night, fish and chips, yeah. buns from shop? Because I guarantee your food's going to be higher than 4,000 4, calories, which is what you use. It'd probably be more like 3,000, to be honest, but mm. we're, just saying yeah, it, we're just saying it to be extreme. I reckon you're going to eat more than 4,000 calories of junk if you're a mad binger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also I think mentally... Which, post, is the, which is a massive thing post show. Which is the next bit I was going to get to, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, I've just jumped the gun. That's no, all right. Um, I think if you know that you, On if you plan. know that you're, yeah, sticking to your plan, you're getting everything in. It doesn't matter how much food you're eating or how much your weight's going up. If in your head you're like, I'm sticking I'm to my plan. plan, great. Like I feel pretty good. Yeah, I've had a nibble here and there. Yeah, but, but you know what? I haven't gone off and smashed takeaway overnight. Whereas if you're 
if you're mentally thinking, oh my God, like I literally cannot stop eating. I've eaten this, I've eaten that. I shouldn't have done this. Yeah. Like you just start beating yourself up and you end up in such a hole with it. And then you try and restrict oh, yourself more to so stop the weight gain. Yeah. And then you fucking binge because you're more hungry. And then you try and restrict because you think, well, I can't keep eating loads of food because yeah. I've just been binge. And it just ends up in this boom, boom, boom. And that yeah. goes on for fucking months when yeah. people and do that. And it's so hard to pull yourself out of that as well. And you just don't want to diet. And- yeah, your brain's in a guilt cycle and yeah. then you want to diet and all this. Whereas like for me, if I can hit people straight out the gate, like that until we get to like a month post show and like yeah. you just said because we've, we've done it with you I've done this I do this with pretty much everybody now but not to them level, other levels of high calories obviously <laughs> um, I get them over the first hump of hunger first yeah. so week one and two is the where it's the very worst yeah. week three is pretty bad mm. but it's starting to die off by the time we get to the end of week four it's settled yeah, yeah. so you're only four weeks yeah. Do you know what I mean? You you're not to going get... to gain tons of body fat from No, and even if you do, if you're prone to gaining body fat, it's going to be a lot less than it would have been if yeah. you went in the other direction, I'm telling you. So do that, get that, wait for the, and I wait for it. I was hungry this week. Oh, it started to die off now. Good. Then yeah. I asked the question, do you feel like if we pulled a little bit of food out of certain areas that you'd probably all right? Yeah. Yeah, probably. So then I pick the things where they're going to lo- notice yeah. it the least. If I've got them on 120 grams of oats a couple yeah, of times yeah. a day and this and that, well, by the time I pull 20 grams of oats out of here, yeah. 30 grams of oats out of there, 10 grams they might be on a couple yeah. of bagels in one meal and I'll yeah. make them thins. All of a sudden, we've knocked 500 calories off the diet yeah. and they're back into a normal range. And you don't really notice it. They don't really notice it because it's picked off of here and there. They were stuffed yeah. anyway. It's dying off and then they're all right to cruise on like that. Yeah. And that's how I do it. Yeah, that works so well rather than, because what I think a lot of people do is think, oh, we'll just build up. And you're like 10 weeks post show and you're still no absolutely chance. starving. Yeah. And by that point, you're like, oh, sod it. And you just start having bits here yeah, and there. Yeah, you need and... to get some fat on anyhow. Yeah, like, it's going to come on to you. You might as well just get a little bit on out the gate, especially as a female whose body needs it more so. Yeah. Well, I won't say more so, but it needs it to yeah. fucking function properly. You might as well get that tackled early. Yeah, I agree. Otherwise, you're going to end up fat. And like, again... You're not going to be able to do no diet for a good six or seven months, really. That's going to work yeah. very well after the show. It's going to work even less well if you've been binging because it come on in such an erratic manner that your body doesn't know what the fuck's going on. It's just gripping onto everything left, right and centre. Um, so you might as well come out of it like that otherwise you end up double fucked. Yeah. That's my answer to that. Yes. Yeah. And I also think the other thing as well, I think we've covered this in another podcast before, but um is try not to book loads of oh, meals yeah. and or holidays. stuff. Or holidays, yeah. yeah. Post show because I just think it's like you've only got so much self control after you've been competing for that long. Like you're not gonna just be able to go out for all these meals and then you have a meal out and think, Oh my god, like oh, I promised son, so I'd go out for this meal. Yeah. It's a great dopamine hit when you're on prep yeah. to be booking stuff and yeah. that's why people do it. I that's exciting. That that, oh my god, so and they're much. thinking about Yorkshire puddings in this pot and that <laughs> and the blah 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 blah. Like that's gonna lead to it's being yeah. and then feeling guilty and all like this and that. Just chill and then start booking plans as you're ready to yeah. with your coach. I do feel honestly like I'm very, very good at reverses. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I've done a lot and I feel like I've got better and better at it. Are you all right? No, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> You're going to sneeze. Um, it's and it's like I say, that's for anyone who's listening, that's me talking broad strokes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If I've got someone who's able to control themselves and they don't want to come up quite as quickly as that, I'm not just going to be like, no, you have to eat loads of food. Do you know what I mean? If mentally they need to go a little bit slower, that's absolutely yeah. fine. Obviously, everything's going to be tailored to each person as I know them and as yeah. they communicate with me. But if I was to talk broad strokes, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, especially with someone that you know is probably a little bit prone to overeating a little bit. Yeah, and if they made it clear, I'm worried about binging, I'm worried about binging, I'm worried yeah. about binging. Right, cool, let's do yeah. this. Yeah, Because the biggest thing then is like making sure their mindset is okay and yeah. they're not stressing. And by the way, you will still not enjoy that bit that much because they all say, I feel like I'm eating so much. Yeah, I've get, And it'll be a week post show and they've gained... Two and a half kilo. Yeah. Right? So like and they're like losing their head. Six because pound of that. Oh whatever. And you was peeled out of your mind a week ago, but obviously you don't think you was. And everyone, everyone does it. Like, oh, Dan, it's co- is this coming up too quick? I'm a bit paranoid. I feel like I've put loads on. Yeah. And then when they look back on that five weeks later, they're like, fucking hell. Yeah. I was still like really well, lean. Well, I remember that. Like looking, I remember at the time post show, I think it was like two or three weeks post show. And I was like, oh my God, that's it. I'm going to have to stop. That's it. Wearing t-shirts in the gym. Like, yeah, when can I'm we getting do so much diet? weight. And yeah. then you look back and you're like, God, I was shredded. Yeah. Just trust. As long as you've got someone telling you what to do and knows yeah, what yeah. they're doing, just trust what they're telling you. Yeah. And every, and everybody comes back on different rates and all. 
So some people might gain three or four kilos in the first week as soon as they start eating. Like if, yeah. you, if you're prone, especially if you've carried a lot of body fat in the past, I've found where some people might start doing that and they'll gain like half a kilo and yeah. you're like, motherfucker. Yeah. Everyone's I mean? so different though, aren't they? So they'll be like, well, how comes Shelly's only gained a kilo and I've gained three kilo? Like, have I done it wrong? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, nah, man, it's good. Everyone yeah. comes up at different rates and everyone's going to find different settling points. Yeah, definitely. It's not, it's not all the same. Jesus. Yeah. Especially when you read it on Insta and it was like, yeah, reverse week one going well. I've gained 0.8 kilo. Yeah. Person's four foot eight. Other person's like, oh yeah, I'm up four kilos. First week yeah. after the prep, she's six foot two. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's a different thing altogether. Yeah. I'm really happy actually with how my reverses have gone. Like with all the, with all the girls I've done, I feel like they've all gone yeah. really well as well. Yeah. Which is nice. So look, there's so much more knowledge around it yeah. than there used to be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even, even oh. five years ago. Just needs going. You, you know, you can just feel it, and it just won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Sometimes you do a pretend one; it, it brings it on. No, do a pretend sneeze, Leah. Go. Achoo! You don't have to. No, you're not jumping in swimming pool. Do your sneeze <laughs> no, like that. Just, 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 just do it. Just, oh, no, no. oh, I think it's gone. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's gone. Leah's not very well today, by the way. She's soldiering on though. I am. She's soldiering on. Still here. <laughs> I've actually felt fine, and then I got in the car, and I was like, "Oh, actually, I feel a bit ropey." Maybe you're allergic to something in the car. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> right. Um, I like this question. How do you deal with clients who are maybe upset around not placing as you have so many who place so highly? Um, how do I deal with them? Yeah, how do you... Maybe you've got a client that's like placed, I don't know, fourth or fifth or whatever and then obviously you get a lot of clients that win. Yeah, yeah, this is Do you ever find that? Do yeah, I do, yeah, because they, they worry about like... It's right, it's quite mad. They worry about how I... Okay. Um, about them placing. It's not them actually where they've placed it. It's yeah, I get think. this. Yeah, I get this a lot. Like, oh, I, I, is that all right for you? Like, I feel real sorry for them when they say that. I'm like, fucking hell, yeah, yeah. of course it is, you mad bastard. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and I'm like feeling bad for them because they've got a place. And like, it depends on the person. Like, yeah, you could have one client place fourth. Yeah. And they're fucking distraught. It's the end of the world. Yeah. You could have another client place fourth and they're fucking buzzing. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it depends who you've got. Yeah. Um. Which happens, it does happen, do you know what I mean? But yeah, I just I just talk to them and just see how, see how they gauge how they are. And if they need to be made feel like feel better about it, just obviously highlight the points that are good. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and yeah. like what, depend what the lineup was like. If it was a super strong lineup and someone's yeah. come forth, highlight the fact. Um, give any feedback what we can maybe improve on, short term and long term. Yeah. Um, put a bit of a plan into place of what we might do possibly next and like at the end of the day it's bodybuilding you can't control who turns up yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. so like it'll be what it'll be end of the day treating them as an individual did we do the press your prep to the best we could did you look the best you could yes or no if not what could we possibly change what do you need to work on yeah. going forward Um, and then just give them a bit of positive kind of information about the way they looked Wait till it, like, because it's hard when you first come off, isn't it? Because you don't know what you look like. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You kind of get in your head a bit sometimes. It's why I don't some people that like, kick off when they didn't win. And I'm like, you you weren't looking at the, like, yeah. how are they looking out there and kicking off about the yeah. result when they, do you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. Anyway, that's a different conversation, but I never get made around that. At least I kick off after you see the pictures. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just sometimes people place lower than, it just, just is what it is. Like, just. Yeah, I right. agree with that. And I think sometimes it's just like, it might not even necessarily be that the client is upset about the place and it might be that maybe they didn't think they were like, yeah. you know, their best or they maybe yeah. they didn't do the posing as well as they wanted. Yeah, like yeah, it might yeah. not even be that they're That's upset what I mean. around the place in. Just if it's a coach asking this, which I'm assuming it is, yeah. Um, just talk to them, man. Just be a yeah. human with them and just fucking speak to them. I hate it. It's my it's my worst favourite part of the job. I, I had this the other day because someone was upset because they didn't get what they wanted to get. Um, and... Not I hate it because, I mean, it's a chore. I mean, it fucking, I, it, yeah. I feel it really yeah. in here. When someone's upset, like, it really gets yeah. to me, do you know what I mean? And obviously, you've got to console them and all the rest of it. Um, and, and, yeah, it's my, it's my least favourite part yeah. of the job, um, seeing people upset. It's Because yeah. it's, you can't just, it's not just all highs, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if someone's fucking buzzing because they've just won, you, you, you're you happy to take yeah. that side of yeah. it. Oh, well, I'll absorb that. You yeah. can't add from that part of it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you're going to be dealing with people that are really upset. Yeah. Um, And you, that's that's part of the job. That's Yeah, 100%. Do you think sometimes as well it's like setting people's, <clears throat> not setting people's expectations, but like, yeah. you know, if, especially if they're like a first timer, like just... 
explaining it a little bit before and like being realistic with like the expectations. Yeah, and, stuff and this is kind of the um the um why people think I'm like a leather boot. Do you know what I mean? Because it's very, very, very rare that I'd like tell somebody that I think they could win or yeah. I think they could do this, I think they're that. Because yeah. I'm fucking smart enough not to say such stupid things. Because you put someone on stage thinking they're going to win. Yeah, and then even I mean. if they come second, they're disappointed. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Whereas yeah. like on a rare occasion, I will have said to people, and I can probably count it on just over one hand over the years. And well, I said it to you anyway, I think. And I, but I still didn't say it. I say, the way you're looking, you definitely are capable of winning the British. Yeah. And when, yeah. when you won the British at that tone figure, I'd said it to you, I think, that year. Yeah. And I've said it yeah. to an handful of other people over the years. The way, but you don't know the fuck's coming. But you've the, never turned around and said, yeah, you're going to win. Like, no. Because you don't know that, do you? Never in my life have I said that. Do you, <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't even have any control no. over that So at sometimes all. maybe it's like the people around them's fault that same. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I get this that. a lot with girls that, are really fucking good. I've got a few like really talented first timers coming through in the next few weeks and everyone's telling them, you're going to go a pro. You're going you're gonna to do, win, well, not yeah. even that. You're going to go a pro and they haven't even competed oh, yet. God. You know, when you pro card this year and like that boxes people's heads in, you can't, yeah. you shouldn't say that to people. Do you know what I mean? Cause that just adds loads of pressure yeah, to them. Yeah. And they're, they're just trying to enjoy the first preps. These yeah. poor lasses, they don't want that on the shoulders. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, if it is a coach asking it, like be careful what expectations you're giving to people. Yeah. You can still be kind and, like night so this is one thing I I got I was really bad with when I was a bit younger I'm a lot better with it now because I purposely tried to make myself better I never complimented anyone right so even if I thought someone looked like a well beater I'd never say now yeah not purposely I just didn't say now I just yeah focused on we need to get lean we need to get this off yeah. we need to get that blah 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 and then it, after it was only about probably about four years ago I started thinking, right, I need to consciously try and compliment people <laughs> yeah. on something that's good because some people need that. But because I was a bodybuilder that didn't want complimenting yeah, and I was coached by people that would never, ever give a right, compliment, yeah. that's what drove me to be better because yeah. I'm like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Like all the time like, I'm mm. training, dieting, cardio, whatever, that was what was in my head. But a lot of people are like that. And yeah. it took me a lot to think, yeah. right, okay, I need to compliment. Because I felt like I was, when I was complimenting somebody, I felt like I'd slow them down. Right, yeah. Because that's taking the fucking wind out of the sails. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you look great. Oh, I don't need to try as hard then. Because that's how yeah, my mind yeah. works. From, from my perspective, it's like if, if like someone you respect a lot is giving you a compliment and maybe they don't, they're not sharing with you compliments all the time. You're like, oh my God, yeah, like that really like means a lot to me. Like I really want to like Well, then that's what people that used to more. say when I'd finally comp say something, they'd be like... Yeah, it's like means a lot because you're not just saying it all yeah. the time. It's like, you know, if you get a compliment, you're like, oh my God, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I'd like to think that's maybe where I'm at now. Yeah, I, I think I'm that's... difficult with how I reflect on myself. I can't really see it. I struggle. Yeah. Um, But I always just treat everyone else how I wanted to be treated. Yeah, yeah. And how I was treated. And for me, if someone complimented me, I don't want to hear it. Like, yeah. Tell me my ass is fat. Tell me my yeah. fucking... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, tell me something yeah. that's going to make me work harder and say, fuck you. So that's what I was always like. So I'm, I've, I've had to character build. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to character build and say, you look good. Oh, you're looking all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're looking all right. That's, I will take that you're as a compliment. You're looking all right. Yeah, apparently if I say you're looking all right, people are like, all right, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I do go out my way now to try and, when I actually think it in my head, say it out loud yeah. a little bit. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I do think that makes a difference, though, especially if someone's a bit like nervous or a bit like, am I looking all right? Am I not? Like, well, it this, just gives this was, of... was me learning more people. And when yeah. I first started doing it, I felt real uncomfortable saying it. I felt like I shouldn't be saying it. But then when you see how people like... <laughs> Yeah. It rockets them, do you know what I mean? And they're, they're rotten. And I'm like, all right, actually, fucking hell, they needed that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, just a bit of like reassurance with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, apparently I'm a leather boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, where's Monique on Instagram? She looks fantastic. Monique, I know everyone was looking for her on Instagram because it. Yeah, I even mean, I was. I was she, like, where is she? She ain't got Instagram. <laughs> she ain't got it. Which is actually so cool. The guys because... who do the social media after the PCA when they're uploading yeah. the pictures onto the thing, they collared me as I was walking by. They said, where's what's Monique's Instagram yeah. handle? I was like, she ain't got it. And it was just like, it looked at me as if I just do you think that's so got cool, off a though? spaceship. Yeah, I do. Yeah. She's like, this is another thing that yeah. I really like about her. Yeah. Um, not that I really like people because they're not on Instagram, but I just found it really like cool. 
She's yeah. Like, and, I'm, and she's like, yeah, I don't, what do I need Instagram for? And yeah. this is this is my opinion. Like, if I didn't do my job and everything, you'd probably never see me again because yeah. I'd fucking delete the bastard because I think <laughs> it's poison, if I'm honest. Yeah. But yeah, she's she, why she needs Instagram. She's got four kids she needs to look after. Yeah, she's fucking got big job that she works all hours at. She's training the rest of the town. She's like, what? I don't. Yeah. I don't what do I need to be on there for? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice because she's just bodybuilding because she like loves yeah, it. Yeah, because she really likes yeah, bodybuilding. Yeah, really nice, isn't it? Yeah. So when she's like, when she turned up at the other show the, the other day, guess what her attitude was like? Nonchalant. Yeah. Calm. You all right? Yeah. You're yeah. looking forward to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's not been looking how everyone yeah. else looks. She's not seen a comment from this person that's might have been a backhanded yeah. dig at her. Or she, she's not seen nothing. Yeah. She's just left work a few days before, got her shell, shit sorted, come up to that Manchester. Quite nice, actually, not, it? Yeah, it's quite nice, Yeah, this is what I say to people. Like Everyone's trapped on Instagram. I, yeah. I, I would be honestly, uh, the minute I stop all this job, I'll be gone. Yeah. You'll, you won't see me on there again. So that's where Monique is. She's in her house with her kids, spending some time with them, not fucking scrolling through Instagram yeah. and just doing everything that she needs to do on a daily basis with a calm mind. <laughs> yeah, think about how calm we all feel. If we yeah, didn't, if we I love it when I come off. I, went, I come off it when I went on holiday yeah. for a week, as you saw. I had people messaging me like, you're right, you're right. You know, because they thought I was actually yeah. not wrong with me. Because you haven't been on Instagram yeah, for a bit, they yeah. Thought, yeah, because obviously when someone disappears, it usually yeah. means something bad's happened. Yeah. Like, nah, my phone's in the same man I don't yeah. I ain't got it with me it's just um I just put my phone in the safe and didn't yeah. look at it apart from once a day I'd yeah. have a look at my phones obviously I did the work I had to do because my work phone's a different phone anyway yeah I just didn't go on Instagram it's fucking class I felt light as a feather yeah it's quite nice isn't it I, I started I don't realise how much all that stuff yeah. without even realising is messing well, with Well, it's just you. like habit, isn't it? That's the thing. It's like, yeah, I, 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 went, I was going through a phase where um, I was like sitting on the set. I was trying to finish work a bit earlier, like not go on my phone and stuff. And I'd, um, I, I purposely la left my phone in my office from like, I think it was from like half eight or something. And I kept, I was watching TV or reading my book and I kept going to like, and I was like, oh my God, I'm yeah, literally yeah. going to grab it and it's not there. And I was like, that just, like my phone's not there and I'm still putting my hand down. I was Do you like, ever delete just, the app? Do you ever do that? No, I don't, but I do have, um, I have an app on my phone now that like blocks all oh, my apps off, said, yeah. um, between like half eight at night and seven in the morning. Yeah. Because I kept saying, right, okay, I need to stop going on Instagram in the evening. I need to like stop replying to clients at like 10 o'clock at night. And then I'd just find myself doing it. And I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. And I was like, it's like I can't help myself. Yeah. Well, that's when you take the app off. I, I used to just delete it off the phone yeah. altogether. <clears throat> for like a day at a time and then just when I needed to upload something, go back on it and then think it was yeah. fucking bollock after a bit. But you'd end up just picking your phone up and pressing yeah. where the button was. It's like I was like, like an automatic habit. If, That's you know, when you I realised this is bad. I like move the app to a different page <laughs> on my phone and I, kept, I was like, where oh my it? God. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? <laughs> it is so messed up when you yeah. think about it. So yeah. That's like where that. Monique That's is. Cute. She's having a happy life. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, off season, why does the body fat go straight to my midsection? Is this hormonal? It has come back on differently to where it was before. Possibly, possibly. There's probably caveats to this and you'll probably have some opinions on this as well. Some, for me, what I found is, and this is what I reckon this actually is, obviously girls carry it all on the legs. Yeah. Well, most, most girls carry a lot yeah. of it on the legs. From being an early teenager, to growing through your teens, into your twenties, whatever it might be, it generally just accumulates more and more and more. And if you're going to, because if you're gaining fat, it's going to go to a certain area, which yeah. is generally dictated hormonally. Obviously, that's why it's on women's legs. <clears throat> then I found, because obviously the first prep I do with these people that carry loads of it on there compared to the upper body, it's a bastard to get off. Well, it's yeah. not a bastard. It's a bastard to keep the upper body intact. I'm coming back to your question, by the way. It's, an, <laughs> it's a bastard sometimes to keep the body intact whilst then digging out yeah. the lower because the upper's flattening off, flattening off, flattening yeah. off because it's lean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you've and still it, got loads of body fat on the lower half. You've still got tons of look, body fat on the lower half. Then when it comes back after that first prep, it never usually comes back like that. Yeah. So it probably seems like there's more on the midsection than there probably was. Probably now because your hormones will be in a different place to where there was when you gained it all there to yeah. start with. So when the body fat comes back as storage, it'll choose maybe more selective the way it is. That's me talking, not necessarily directly scientific, but possibly, do you know what I mean? And I do see this, but it's probably just come back a little bit more equally yeah. distributed. Yeah. And it seems like there's more on your stomach because yeah. it's a little bit more evenly spread, which is usually why after that first prep, they never seem to gain it, unless you go and get real fat, they never, never mm. seem to gain it all back there. From what yeah. I see. So then when we get back to the next preps, it becomes more and more easy. Yeah. I'm going through this with a client at the minute who carried like a lot on their lower half. She hadn't competed yet, 
but we've gone through multiple diet phases to try and just bite more and more into that because yeah. it was a massive, even it light a off huge a difference from lower to upper. So the diet phase as much yeah. as we need to, which we're now like a second or third one from memory. Um, and it's getting better yeah. and better. And every time we're coming back, it's getting nearer and nearer yeah. than it was when we looked from the start point. So that when we finally do come to a prep, It'll it's going to be a lot easier to get through. And that's, again, going back to working with coaches for long periods of time, like yeah. she wouldn't have had that if if she'd have just come and built all the muscle she needs yeah. and then would have, had, would have been like, she'd have had a lot worse of her experience, you know I mean? But because she's come a couple of years before she wants to get on stage, we're, we're now, when we do diet, we can yeah. focus on um, the cut that we're running at the minute. We're actually going probably four more weeks in than we would have because I just want to see more out of it yeah. before we then come back out. And then we'll, and we'll just keep repeating the process until she's ready to get on stage. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes... Um, <clears throat> with like coaching people think oh you know we'll just do like one court or you know one build and then that's it I'll be there and it's like sometimes I'll have to have this conversation with clients where actually you might need you know a little bit of time dieting and then maybe a reverse and a bit of a build and then back into a diet Depends phase what they need, it, it? it might take you like four or five cycles to actually yeah. get to a place where you're like okay I can you know I can actually see it a bit more yeah which can be like a year, two, three years, maybe. Depends on the circumstance, especially if they need to build the right amount of muscle. Yeah. But if there's a huge, I mean, we've moved off topic now, haven't we? <laughs> but if there's a huge disparity of body fat, you're not generally going to get that in one run. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you need to take that into account. And there's always more there than you think. Yeah. I also think with that as well, it's like going to be so specific to you, like where you carry a bit more body fat. Because I feel like this used to like, I, I used to, I've got some friends where their waist, even in their off season, like they still have like quite a yeah, yeah, tight tiny waist. waist. Yeah. And it always used to really get to me because I was like, because I feel you like I carry just, a bit more. Yeah, there, I yeah. carry a bit more like around my midsection. Yeah. And I was always like, oh my God, like why, why is this happening? It yeah. used to get, so, but now I'm like, oh, it just Girls is what it is. Me. Like it and just like, comes on there. You can't really help that. You say it, yeah. And I say, you say that, but like the girls who carry it badly around the backside and their armstrings and that. Yeah. They're in a worse position. Yeah, they, they, and I think you're always going to notice it. Like if you carry it a little bit more somewhere else, you're going to notice it more. Yeah. But then it's like if someone's got maybe a small waist, they might carry it. Like I've got a, um, a friend who has a really tiny waist, but then she hates the, like a triceps because she yeah, carries a lot of fat on the triceps. There, yeah. I so had this client like, years ago. Yeah. This is a bit of random. It's kind of associated with that, but not really. She carried a lot on the bottom. It was back in the PT days. It was a long time ago, going back well over 10 years. And I dieted her right down and fuck me, her lower body was fucking stubborn. Jesus Christ. And we had to bury her and bury yeah. her and bury her in the last stints of the, before the prep to get in. And then when she got right down, she was still about three weeks out. All her legs was lean. All her upper body was being traded for weeks. All her legs was leaning all around the glutes. Then she had just on the side of her leg there, just where you, like, yeah. your pocket would be, just behind where your pocket would be, like a perfect circle of fat on both sides in exactly the same place. Right. And it took us the other rest of the three weeks to get that off. But the rest of her legs were lean. That's so weird. I've never seen anything like it to this day still. Mm. It's almost as if like them bits had been anchored in or something. Yeah. <laughs> perfect circles as well. Like a perfectly 360 That's circle. That's so random. Yeah. I remember that. Fucking... Just like genetically where she was like carrying more fat or something. But yeah. But it, but there were but perfect in a very circles. Place. Yeah, it was so mad. <laughs> And, we, and I, I remember having to like drill her for the last yeah. couple of weeks before the show and just watch them little bits melt away. It was real mad. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen how it like it. It's crazy. Um, how much progress can you make in two weeks between shows? Quite a lot. Yeah. Good bit. <laughs> Especially when you're lean, like when you're lean and you pull another four or five, six pounds off, which you could do in two weeks. Like you yeah. can quite visibly see that on someone. Yeah. I mean, if it's two weeks between shows. So if you've, yeah. Yeah, like you say, if you pull a good few, yeah. a few pound off and you're already lean, it's yeah. going to make a big visual difference. Do you always feel like as well, you know, if someone's obviously like ran a peak where you like backed off a bit, um, chilled, and then you have your show day, you don't really like eat much on your show day, yeah. and then you get back stuck to your plan and it like <laughs> flies off, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, because you've had a full week of resting and that's what I was yeah. about to say. So you basically just had a full refeed week in a way. Yeah. Body's chilled out. It's been like shook off a lot of cortisol from the show stress itself yeah. and being worried about it and you might have had a little buzz when you've been on stage and like that's a released a lot of it like and then when you get back into dieting on the monday dum 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 just starts coming it's like down a quick. rocket and the other thing is if you've got two weeks between shows you don't need to run a full peak week again yeah because the the 
the process of a peak week is put there as a full week because you've just shaken off 20 weeks worth of dieting or 15 weeks worth of dieting, whatever. You don't necessarily need a full week. Yeah. So you probably have 10 days of fat loss from the Monday, probably into the next Wednesday. Still leave yourself the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then compete on the Sunday and be absolutely fine. That's what I would yeah. do anyway. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't just diet someone for a week, then do a full peak week. There's, yeah. not, there's nothing yeah. to shake off. Do you know what I mean? They're not run flat completely. Probably still fill up. They might right? be flat, but they'll fill up very easily. Yeah. You've got a good idea what the body's going to do for the first few days. Um, I won't I go. Any, I won't go any later than the Wednesday. Like, but. I feel like two weeks is quite a nice time because it's like in your head, you're not like, oh my god, I've got four weeks of like two dieting. Two weeks is perfect, but it's enough to make a bit of a change, isn't it? Yeah, well, a lot of a change, especially if you've do, like done a couple of things that were a little bit off. Like, you might have been a bit flat, yeah, or you might have realized some foods don't sit as well as you thought they were going yeah. to on show day. Certain cross, certain just to just any little bits of things that you might so, like pick little up. tweaks. Yeah, like just going back to what I said about Sammy on last episode and just noticed that her hair was in the wrong place on this, so it was covering her shoulder, so we need to make some little bits of adjustments yeah. to her hair or bikini might look a little bit better if it's sat a little bit differently on your hips or little things that can make big changes, you know, like all the tan. Yeah. Like, do we need to run a little bit of a different tan process because actually you still looked a little bit pale by the yeah, time yeah. you got up there. Them things are not trial run. All these things yeah. are not trial run, do you know what I mean? Yeah. These things you only see when you get up on stage. Yeah, definitely, that makes sense. So, yeah. A lot of progress. Um, Breaking out in spots, how do we help this? More cardio, the more spotty or change in food? We were talking about this. Yeah. So more cardio, the more... The more cardio, the more spotty, I think. Is that what it's saying? Which we said we think is down to like just sweating. Possibly just cleanliness, which probably... They might be like, no, I'm clean. But I think just like if you re- – so like obviously everyone don't get that, but if you're really prone to it, yeah. then maybe making sure you shower straight yeah. away as soon as it, and get into clean clothes straight yeah, away. Yeah. So maybe change your bed sheets more often as well if you sweat on a night. Maybe don't put a sticker T-shirt or jumper or pyjamas or whatever you yeah. sleep in. Maybe leave it off or a vest or something like that. Possibly that. Um, could be food. Something could be in the food. But like in a bit of an intolerance. Dairy to is can be quite common with that. I've seen where people get quite spotty. They haven't specified where the spots are, have they? Or have they? No, they're just so breaking out in spots. I have seen that a lot actually with people then. that. So that, if it's the face, the dairy. dairy could be the problem. Yeah. Um, sometimes hormone imbalance that starts occurring. Yeah. Sometimes people will get on a little bit better if they then I've, I've had girls that have been put onto then a mini pill. Yeah. Who've not been on anything, and that's the thing that clears it up. There's like there's so many different answers to this. I don't know, but if it's specific to dieting, it's more than likely going to be maybe a slight hormone shift or um the cleanliness. Yeah, because sometimes I'll find like you know a lot of coaches will train in the middle of the day, and like I know sometimes if I've got calls, I'm like back from the gym, straight on your calls. I'm straight on my calls. So I'm yeah. straight in work, and I'm sat there, and it's like six hours later when you get a shower. That makes me sound really disgusting. Or <laughs> if you're wearing makeup, yeah, and then yeah, doing cardio, true. and then it's like you're all sweating. sat under that, and it's in your paws, and like get yeah. that off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, don't have makeup on when you. Yeah. Do. Probably all that stuff, really, I would yeah, think. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Unless you're smashing Primo, it might be that. <laughs> yeah, might be that. I'm only joking. <laughs> Always not. I think generally, like especially female, like not wearing makeup all the time, I feel like that made such a difference to me. Yeah, I think like, once you become like fitness girls, you can't really be wearing makeup all the time, can you? Because yeah. train like fuck, aren't you? Yeah, too much effort to put on every day. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Thoughts on insulin with females, can it be used... Benefits of metformin. Thoughts, please. Mm. Have you ever had... No, I've never put I've never heard of females on insulin. Yeah, it seems it's a fairly common thing. It's part of this whole, like, use less androgens across the year and use more other things where they'll have them on, like, um, growth hormone, insulin, clenbuterol, metformin. Like, It's a common thing at the minute. Don't disagree, agree, don't, nor disagree. It's not something I've ever had a client do, taking insulin, just because... You don't know who you're fucking dealing with. Yeah. You might be dealing with But like something. insulin's a bit of a risk. Yeah, because you start so going easy hypo and crash your wrong. car. And, yeah, I know. Like you accidentally put the wrong amount of insulin in and you've that, absolutely screwed yourself this over. This is what I mean. Or you don't get to your food into Like there's multiple different. Yeah. It's just something I don't want to fuck with. For the, for the very, very, very small amount of what you actually get yeah. from it. For me, insulin, what my actual opinion is really, apart from the dangers of it, of not giving it to a female, <sighs> For like larger bodybuilders to like accommodate more food that are into smashing the system, like loads of carbs that are eating stuff. a lot of carbs. Do you know what I mean? Um, and to be able to, you get to a certain point where you're a certain size where you need so many fucking calories to get bigger that you 
body's probably going to need some assistance to accommodate that to then be yeah. able to do what you need with it. For me, as a female, do you need that? I don't personally think so. I think you can eat enough fairly comfortably to be able to gain weight yeah. and accommodate it. Bit of, metfor- bit, bit of metformin, not against that at all. Keeping your body a little bit more sensitive and what have you whilst you are pushing up with your calories yeah. f- for a period of time. Mm-hmm. Not really against that. Mike, sometimes the only side effect you see from that is sometimes a little bit of stomach upset, possibly for the first three or four days. Sometimes, rarely though, mm. until they settle into it. So there's no real downside to it. Yeah. Um, it's actually used as a longevity drug with a lot of these, like, you know, these people that are like trying to live forever and all these type of like health crack nuts and that. Mm. Yeah, it's real common with them to be using metformin. Yeah. And a lot of these, um, Doctors that are into all the the health space, basically, let's call it the health space. They're very into it, which is a good signal of, I can't be that fucking bad, do you know what I mean? So I don't see that as bad at all. Um, If you want to use insulin, use it. Is is it the wonder drug it's made out to be? No, especially not without using a decent amount of growth hormone and steroids with it. Yeah. Um, I was thinking kind of as a female, if you're like looking after yourself, like, you should be pretty like insulin sensitive anyway, shouldn't you? Yeah, pretty much. And like how many carbs are women pounding per day to be able to need yeah. insulin to then, because to be pounding loads of carbs, that means you need fucking loads of calories. And how many calories does a woman need? How many women need more than three, three and a half thousand mm. calories? Maybe four if they're hungry bastards and they just like <laughs> eating. Like how much more ca- <laughs> do you need than that? Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so then how, why do you need the insulin to accommodate that? I just, I just, I just, I don't think, yeah. I don't think they do personally. If you're eating seven thousand calories a day and fucking oh. thou- thousand grams of carbs a day, which I mean, that's what I used to eat when I was full, yeah. like fully trying to yeah. blow. Yeah, a little insulin was very handy. It seemed mm. to work very well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in allowing me to use, utilize more of that food. Yeah. But if you if you're eating a few hundred grams of carbs a day, not right. specific to females, really. Yeah, and would you give a male that if they was only eating that amount of food? Yeah, I get what you do mean. You get what I mean? A hundred percent. This is the last question. Oh. I asked this question the other day, but didn't realise it was for a different podcast. Is there risk for fertility? Fatality. Fatality. Fertility. Is there, what did I say? Fatality. <laughs> That's when you die, Leah. <laughs> is there risk with, risks with fertility if a female starts bodybuilding in her late 20s or early 30s? Stops or starts? Starts. Starts. Um all I can say is personally I've never seen it there's always risks to anything I was literally just going to say that (laughs) there's risks to anything if you're fucking about with stuff that can like stop your periods and start your periods and give you irregular periods basically dieting down to low body fats I've never seen a problem with it coming back and getting sorted some I've seen people have problems with timing of getting it back, sometimes it'll take, I've seen it where it's gone on for a long time, yeah. like eight, nine months maybe after a show or something before they've got it back. Sometimes that's because they might be limiting certain areas of things that they need, like restricting calories a little bit too much or fats yeah. a little bit too much, namely. Um, that's generally where you're going to see sometimes a problem or maybe trying to stay to too low body fats. Um, but I can't honestly say I've ever spoke to anyone who's said, oh, I can't have kids now, I've done bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah. I've spoke to women who've been like bodybuilder, bodybuilder yeah. women who've yeah. wrecked themselves with gear. That's a that's a different conversation. But so don't wreck yourself with gear. Yeah. But I mean, we've spoke about that already. Um, that but that would be fairly extreme. But any no, I've no, yeah, I've I've never seen it. I'm not promising you because I can't I can't sit here and say in concrete stone you will always be able to have children if yeah. you're bodybuilding. Yeah. But. Nah, it's, I mean, it, it stops. Am I saying it's healthy that like, people's period stops? Yeah, no, I was literally not, just going to say that. that. Like, it's obviously not optimal from a health perspective to no. like lose and gain your cycle, but I yeah. think... On the, on the grand scheme of things, yeah. on, on what a human body is, yeah, I'm I'll, I'm pretty sure you'll be, you'll be all right. Yeah, as long as, you, as long as you're not dragging it out after your show and like staying super lean and yeah. and having like years of your life where you're not having a cycle. Yeah, then. and just go competing just back to back and just not getting any, yeah. everything back to where it should be before you go again. Like, yeah. That's the main thing. It's like most people, on average, the cycle drops off halfway through the prep maybe yeah. or maybe towards the back end. Usually it's back, usually about two, maybe three months post-show yeah. if I was to talk in broad strokes. Um, and that's about it. Some people, a lot of girls, the periods don't even stop. Yeah. Which... They're not happy about half the time. Yeah. Fuck it, why can't, my, annoying, why can't my period fuck off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, so that's quite cool, actually, that, that someone can get that lean and, like, still... It just leathers loads. It happens yeah. all the time. All the time. I did, just this weekend, just gone, one of yeah, them. that's it mad, just, isn't it? Like, started looking progressively worse a couple of weeks before the show. Like, what's going off here? So I yeah. think you're due, you know. Don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, Thursday before the show. Oh, <laughs> oh no, yeah. not what you want. Yeah. Well, it's better than dragging out to the show because then she started looking better in the yeah, following yeah, days after it. that as the water started to come yeah. away. Well, it's actually mad, isn't it? Like, it's think that, you know, that must just be where some bodies are like, they're all right sitting. Yeah, they must be just happy point. with that. <laughs> That's where everybody's different. Or some people, I'll start dieting them or even on a cut, a mini cut. Yeah. And then that the period just gone. Yeah. First period in, yeah. three weeks of dieting, boom, gone. Mad, isn't it? How Body's just panicked. Body's, just Body's gone, whoa, we better not have no kids. She's trying to starve us. <laughs> I, I always think it's like like a really clever body. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'd like if someone's still having periods, I'm like, yeah, your body must be a bit slow to twig on. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll, we'll still have kids. Don't worry about it. No matter that she's been restricting calories for the last 20 weeks. We'll, we'll be right having kids. A real, a real uh, non- nonchalant body. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. that well, we'll be all right. 800 calories. Well, plenty to go around there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh. <laughs> and that's that. Yeah. All good. That's a good Round episode. Round up the questionnaires. Yeah, there were some right questions. There. I yeah. only put that on this morning as well. Mm. I was like, fuck, I better get one on. We're on the podcast in four hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some more come through. I haven't got my phone with me yet. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll check mine. Should we wrap up? Yeah, wrap up. Should we wrap it up? Wrapping it up. What was that, 22? 22. Fucking veterans. Veterans. How long do you think we'll keep going for? <laughs> To Leah's on prep next year, and all of a sudden she didn't want to talk to Dan no more. Do you want to make it to 50? I think we should make that deal to make it to 50. How many, how long is that? Oh, there we go, we're sad. How many years away is that? Is that a year away? Yeah, it's just one more year. We've done one year. Oh, yeah, one of course. More year. Oh, yeah. We can make it another year. <laughs> yeah, September, which is when you start seeing your ass about this time next year, won't oh, yeah. it? Oh, I'll be dying at this fuck point next him. year. I'm not driving all the way there. Like, Dan, can we do it on Zoom? I'm not leaving my house. <laughs> I'm only joking. She's actually delightful on prep. <laughs> You're fine, yeah. You're I feel fine. all right on prep. I was taking fair. piss the other day. I can't remember what I was like. Some people just stop talking to you. Yeah. And like, you get to like four weeks out, and all of a sudden you're like, yep. Yeah. No, yep. And I'm like, all right, I'll wait till they finish. <laughs> <laughs> No, I it feel like I'm okay. Right. No, you're fine, yeah. yeah. You just, your head gets thinner and thinner and it just... Oh, gets God, it. honestly, I saw <laughs> I saw a video Fuck of my head hell, every time way. I see Leo, she just bought some bigger glasses. <laughs> yeah, my glasses are like gigantic. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, yeah, they come in looking like Thunderbird. <laughs> like... <laughs> I was watching a video the other day. I think it was one of my old YouTubes came up and it, you know, when you're like on YouTube uploading something in one of the old ones and it started playing and I was like, oh my God. And yeah. my like my face just looks so weird. You know, you forget what you look like, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. Yeah. And then when it goes back to normal, it takes a bit to get used to it. And now, now oh. it's just normal again. And yeah. now he's like, you could see like all the lines in my jaw here. And I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was really, um, people would probably say it's a good thing, but I always used to piss me off. I never really looked like I was dieting when I was dieting. Like and in your face? Yeah. Yeah. And I'd be, everyone would be like thinking, oh, he's not very lean. And they'd say it to me after as well. Well, we thought you fucking was going to be yeah. fat because your fucking face didn't look no different. Yeah. It'd get to like one week out and then all of a sudden I'd just get like, and that's yeah. it. It just looked the same. I hate, my, my face goes so like, I feel like skull-like and I hate it because I just feel like yeah. I just don't like I wanted it. to look like I was dieting out in my face yeah. as well. I never got that. Yeah. Devoured. Yeah, I feel like guys are right, but I feel like when girls get proper school faces, I don't know. Some look better, some look worse, don't yeah. they? Depends, I yeah. suppose. Well, yeah, on that note. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any more questions and we haven't answered any of the questions or you think of any more questions, feel free to just DM us on Instagram. I always put our Instagram handles in the notes under the oh podcast on the YouTube and Spotify. Yeah. So you can And also find what we're doing, we're plugging now as well, aren't we? Yeah. We're if you'd like to be coached by us, then just feel free to drop into our inbox. Or Failing that, we've got a registry form in our link on our bio on our Instagram. See you there. <laughs> that good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll put that on every time. We'll record that and we'll put it on every time. An outro. That was my voice. That was my like, come talk to oh. me. Yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Get arrested for that voice. <laughs> Would you like a sweetie? <laughs> <laughs> right, good. Yeah. See you, bye.